Hello, sweet friends. I am Jen. And I do lots of things. But for this, I make complex issues digestible through doodles and analogies. I love doing it. I have a blog, relativelyparticular.com, where I share all kinds of stuff. There might be sock puppets in the near future. Just saying. I share doodles raps guy care so much about reactions i speak with literary subtractions while my whole numbers become fractions and i hide what i think i'm lacking my most recent writing like meltdowns or recent publications and i share my paintings so today's relatively particular lesson is mediocre drum roll will smith is not going to rescue me and other things depression has taught me except we're going to mark out depression and let's call it something not as heavy emotional low points which i guess we have to change the has to have because i have a degree in professional writing hooray student debt okay here's what an emotional low point is not this chick's like oh my god they forgot my peppermint why does this always happen to me Q meltdown no, that's not the type of emotional low point I'm talking about. I'm talking like deep, dark pit of despair. Don't know up from down, right from wrong, truth from false. Now, let me hit a pause button really quick because uh, I don't want to hate on that Starbucks chick because here are some things that I have had meltdowns over, like full-blown meltdowns. Uh, there was a Yorkie and it was smiling and then I cried for three hours. That's the true story. I don't know what else to tell you. It was heavy. Uh, air. I have frequently had meltdowns over just the general existence of air and our necessity for it. it. Makes me feel claustrophobic. A week out of every month, I have meltdowns secretly over my boyfriend's daughter's adorable little pink socks. Thanks, uterus. And if you know me at all, you know that gum is pretty much a no-no when around me. Noises and smacking and tears. It's dramatic. This is not true to size. Okay, play. Now, another word that I like to use aside from emotional low points, again, trying to remove that heaviness around it is valleys. Here's what the valley sort of situation looks like. When you're at a peak, it's like king of the castle, king of the castle. And you want to stay up there, right? We want to dance and enjoy it. And then life kind of knocks us down and makes us right size. Get back up, right? And it's like, pew. But then, you know, it kind of keeps getting okay. worse. This is an example of what a valley can often feel like. Another word that I really like to use is storms because storms are not permanent, just like emotions are not permanent. They come and they go. If you're not familiar with the whole storm concept, it looks and feels like this. So I'm all feeling down in the dumps and it's like I got a cloud over my head and rain and it follows me wherever the hell I go, no matter what I do. And it seems like I keep connecting with people who are like, yay, isn't life magnificent? And I really just want them to spontaneously combust or just be miserable like I am. But that's wrong and bad. And I know that because life is magnificent. But when I'm in these places, I'm not at that vibration. I can't quite understand it. And these people breathe, man. They're like gerbils. All this happiness, and I feel like a bag of asses. That is a storm. Quick pause button. Let me explain this whole label situation, why I've removed depression for this video, and I'm using valleys and storms instead, okay? I have grown up dealing with all kinds of different diagnoses, and I've worked really hard to get away from those. And I've found that there's a lot of freedom in being label-free, like this guy, except not done through PowerPoint presentations, so it'd be smoother. And then all of a sudden, you hit the label, and... It's heavy, and that's how it's been for me. Carrying around these labels of like, oh, here are these things that are wrong with me, so I have to act this certain way, okay? Now, that being said, if there is a label that works for you, that's fine, keep it, awesome, I'm proud of you. But for this video, we'll be using Storm and Valley. Okay, play. When I'm in a storm or a valley, an emotional low point, it feels like this, except boop, there's my stuffed animal. That's more realistic. And I have hair, but I just didn't want to deal with it with the doodles. It feels like there's an elephant standing on me. There could be a point of emotional debilitation. And I try to ignore it because that's what people say to do, right? It's like mind over matter. And it's still there. So eventually, yeah, it's like, hi, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, 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 hey. Eventually, I'll just go to sleep. And I'm like, I'm just going to go into a mini coma. Now, here's what I want to happen. Out of nowhere, I want there to be a knock on my door. And suddenly I want Will Smith, like MIB Will Smith, to come in and be like, I'm here to rescue you. And he's going to tame that emotional low point elephant. And he's going to be like, hop on, girl. And I'm going to hop on. And I'm going to get Patches Puff on the back. And we are going to live happily ever after. And he'll pay off all my student debt. Except that's not real. 
This teaches us that we have to stop expecting someone to rescue us because it's not their job. And even if a friend does do it, we can't really rely on them for it. That's not fair. Here's what actually happens. I lay there and I do nothing except send telepathic messages to all the people who I'm fairly certain are doing better without me. And no one comes because telepathy. So there's just cricket noises and, you know, the only thing there is the cricket. But even he eventually gets bummed out and leaves. Here's our next lesson. By the way, I'm fully aware that my cricket noises need work. Okay. People cannot read your mind. If you need help, you have to ask for it. Now, people might say no, and we have to learn to be okay with that. But it's better to ask than not, right? So here's this little stick figure like, okay, I'm going to reach out for help. But this is a thing that comes up for me when I'm in a storm. I get these ideas that nobody cares and that... I don't know, they're better off without me. And I'll scroll through my phone and my contact list and it's like no one's actually there. And it's sad. It really is. But guess what? These low points lie. So it's best to ignore any of the negativity that's there. Just ignore it. Do your best. Even if there's validity to what you're worrying about, like, oh, my job isn't the right fit, just save that for later. Don't worry about it now. Now, when in these spots, it's really easy to imagine that everyone else is like, yay, we're so much happier without Jen. But let's be real, dude. They're watching Netflix, and they're getting sucked into the Matrix, and they're melting on the sofa with their significant other all up in Facebook and stuff like that. Or they're doing boring shit, like laundry or cleaning the cat box. But when in a valley, or a storm, or feeling like there's an elephant on my chest, it's pretty easy to think that everyone's happier, richer, skinnier, and more well-endowed than I am brings us to number four. Others are way more boring than we imagine, so it's best to cease comparison, especially when in these rough spots. I often get hung up in this idea of, okay, well, what do I do to feel better? And here's my challenge. Let's take away the concept of negative and positive from feelings just for this week. So say we want to feel different rather than better, because you know what? It makes the storms and valleys easier to handle. Storms are necessary. They bring pretty green things and flowers and Whenever we're in the valleys, it's a point of rest before we begin the climb to our next peak. Even looking at the word depression, deep rest on. So it's a time to get your deep rest on when we remove that negative charge around it. Let us review. Will Smith won't rescue you, and if he does, send him my address for research purposes only. So what we have to do is be our own hero and we do for ourselves what we want other people to do for our, us, you know? Next, no one can read your mind unless you pay a trained professional like Miss Cleo. So if you need help, you have to ask for it. And that's another expression of being our own hero because it's hard sometimes. Self-bullying thoughts are dirty, dirty liars. Do not feed the thoughts. Refuse to condemn yourself. This does take practice, but you can do it. Everybody poops, especially this guy. And what I mean is people are way more boring than you think. Stop comparing your sulky farty pajama low point to how great you imagine others' lives are. It's a lie. Feelings are neither positive nor negative. They just are. So once you embrace and accept the valleys as a part of human existence, they stop being so scary. Yeah, so uh, that's it for this video. You know what the cool people are doing? Hashtag peer pressure. Go and thumbs up this video, add a comment, let me know what you think about it, what you got out of it, and what you'd like other videos to show you. And listen to Will Smith. Subscribe. Yay. The end. <laughs>